Hello group, Jeff here. So I had the C14 set up to uh, look at the sky. We have a very flat sky because I have clouds, very thin layer of clouds, which is basically like a diffuse layer, a diffusion uh, layer. And what that'll give me is even light. I have my computer set up with Melichem Sky. And uh, I also have a light box right here. Probably won't see much because it's so bright out. So whether it's a light box, the sky, blue skies, gray skies, you can make flats. And you want to be at uh, prime focus or star focus uh, with the scope when you make your flats. So let's get into it here. It's very easy. It's nothing complicated about it. What confuses many people is the fields. Fields versus frames. And the AP crowd that comes into uh, the uh, live view astronomy, which would be any Melikam type camera, is the fact that uh, these are video chips for the most part and they generally work in fields or frames depending on the chip and a, a, an astrophotography camera is basically a frame it's always taken frames very rarely will it take fields so in Melikam Sky you will see that I have the 432 this will work for any camera that can use Melanchem Sky. My exposure is very short because it's daytime. It doesn't matter though, because what we want are these little boogers right here. So if I just, I like to keep my exposure so that the histogram is kind of centered. Uh, excuse me. And if I drop the histogram or the exposure down to say 0.8, I think that's a little too dark. We go up to say 0.9. I still think that's a little too dark. So we'll just leave it at one, one millisecond. Not I'm kind of happy with that. So what we will do is drop down to the f uh, flat field correction and we'll do a capture and you'll see boom it's done. You captured those fields in short order and just to prove that I got them I'm going to enable the flats and you'll see that my little boogers are gone. There's nothing there now. So that's on off. They're back. One there, one there, one there, one there. Off, on. Off, on. Off, on. Now, uh, just so that you understand, my gray skies aren't perfectly flat. There is some inconsistency in the, in the clouds, but this is just to show you that uh, you can make your flats with pretty much any kind type of sky condition. I like to do uh, right before the sun sets and I'll shoot blue sky. And then I also like to do a white balance. I feel that the white balance gives you the best. I used to do no white balance in the default settings uh, for for uh, the white, so if I hit the faults, I just don't like this. They're still there and they're being removed. I just don't like the, I personally don't like the look, so I always white balance, that's just a me thing. On, off. Now if you have a light box, uh, mine happens to be a backlit box because it's thick. An edgelit box would be about that thick. You have to be careful with these panels. This is a two by two. This is plastic on mine. 
So this thing is very light, very light, even with the batteries on it. I have four nine volts running through a buck uh, converter and I'm outputting about 32, 31 and a half volts. I think it's like 2.4 amps. And because it's an edge light camera or uh, panel, I have LEDs here, 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 and here. So I have gaps where edge lit would go from the outside in. That's a more even light. So what I would have to do on my scope, if I'm going to use this panel, is put a t-shirt over the, the end of the scope. It's a double thickness t-shirt. See if I can do this one-handed. Then you pull it taut so that you don't have any wrinkles. So, bugaboo. And now what this is, this is acting like a diffuser. So with my particular light panel, I can now lay this on top of this. It put my scope so that it's straight up and I can lay this on top. And because of uh, the two layers, it acts as a diffuser. So if you look at my uh, we go back to the computer, you'll see that because I added the extra layers, the two layers of t-shirt, I have to up the exposure. And you can see now that my lighting is much flatter. It's more even across left to right and up and down. I still think I have a little too much, so we'll go down to 11 and see what that does. Maybe 10. I'm kind of liking that. As long as I'm near the center, I'm happy. In between 100 and, uh, what is that, 120, 150. So that would be 125. This is plenty good enough. So if I go and make do another capture and then I enable it, you'll see that my, my schmutz goes away again. So that's on, off, back, on, off. And you don't need, uh, if you're going to use Millencamp Sky to do your flats, you got to use the, uh, the field, the flat field uh, conversion. If you're going to do uh, AP work, where you need flats, biases, uh, and darks, you can still do it in Mellencamp Sky. You would just save out, instead of using the uh, flat field conversion, you would just save out the frames. So if I take a snap of this, let me turn it off. I'll take a snap. There's the snap. You can now see that the picture has my boogers. So I don't know how many uh, flats that the AP crowd usually makes, but it can be done. And if you want to do batch captures, you can also set up through the options preferences. You go into batch records and you can tell it how many, or I'm sorry, auto capture you would go to. And you can uh, capture every frame and you can tell it how many you want to capture. So let's just do 10 for the heck of it. D Mellencamp Sky. And then we'll do a capture. We'll do auto capture. Boom, 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 it's done. I can go into my folder, D Mellencamp Sky, today's date. 
and there they are. If I, oh, these are TIFFs, so I'll open them up, and you can see that there are my boogers right there. So that's how you would do it uh, for your flats and your darks. Um, you just do a little batch capture of, of each, and then uh, for the darks, you would set it up for your exposure gains, all the, those little tricks of the trade. If you want to make bias frames, you can do the same thing. So it's not that difficult to uh, make your stuff in Melicamp Sky. It's just an extra step uh, because you would have to save each thing in, uh, as, as your little groups and then uh, load up like Deep Size Stacker or Auto Stacker, whatever you're going to use, PixInsight, and then uh, go to where you save those files and load them up. Uh, and then process your image like you normally would. So, uh, as you can see, this didn't take an arm, didn't take too long, <laughs> and I got what I needed. Um, I have cleaned my optics. I still have some smudge. It's on the inside of the corrector. I have to take the corrector off to fix that. But as long as I can make flats, it take, takes care of the problem for me. So, if uh, you have any questions, you know where I live. And uh, we'll catch you on the group. Thanks.